everyone. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper, and welcome back to Build, the new CW show, All American, follows Spencer, a rising high school football player from Compton, who's recruited to play for a team in Beverly Hills. Actor Tay Diggs plays his coach, who tries to help him reach his potential on the field and balance living in two very different worlds. Diggs joins us today to talk about his new role, but first, a clip from All American. Spencer. Yo, man, I quit. I'm done here. Why? Because I need your help to win a season? Look, winning is my job. Man, you should have said that from the start. Are that here to give you a chance talk? I didn't need it. And I don't belong here. Look, yes, I need you to win games, but you need me more. It's all right. This is your chance, Spencer. This is your way out. Look, I'm trying to help you. I didn't ask for your help. Or a way out. Look, you might recall I wasn't the one knocking down Beverly's door. You came, said you'd help me get to my dream. And now that I get here, you changed my position. How is that helping? You can see the field, Spencer, in a way few players can. Look, I made a promise, remember? I said that I would help you get to the NFL. But in order to do that, I need you to see the field from every angle. Because when you do, you'll be unstoppable. Look, I, I'm just getting to know you, okay? But I can see you plain as day. You're looking for a fight. And all your life, every bad decision you've ever made is because your father left you when you were a kid. Listen to me. But the path you take now, that's up to you. Everyone, put your hands together for Tay Diggs. What's happening, y'all? Can you I hear me? Just... Check, check, check. Just kidding. All right. I was like ready. <laughs> you ready to drop some bars? I was also like looking for <laughs> tissues after watching these intense dramatic oh, scenes. Oh, yeah, we give it to you. Yeah, I got to check out the first two episodes, and I loved it because, you know, we've seen football stories, but this was such a mix of like Friday Night Lights and One Tree Hill. But there's the the way that black characters are written in this is so different than those other two shows, which is what I love. It feels like it's more of the time. Yes. And I felt like that was really important. That kind of elevated this narrative that we've yes. seen before. I love how you are describing the show. Yeah. And th these are the exact reasons why, uh, why I was drawn to the script. Um, uh, <clears throat> these, uh, these issues, the issues that, that the WB slash CW has, uh, has unapologetically uh, decided to, you know, to tackle. Uh, I'm very, I'm, I'm very impressed with. Mm -hmm. So let's start at the beginning. Um, when did you get your hands on this script, and how did that whole process work? And you, were, oh yeah, man, do this? it's been a whirlwind. Uh, pilot season. I forget when when pilot season is, but you know, you you read a bunch of scripts, and you you, uh, you know, I wasn't expecting anything like this. You know, every pilot season, you you try to try to do something kind of different. You try to see who's going to pay the most, you know, who the cast is, where it shoots. And, uh, and with this piece, everything just aligned itself perfectly. But, but most importantly, um, you know, the, the subject matter just really resonated with me. You know, these issues of, of, uh, these issues of identity and, and race and sexuality and, uh, and socioeconomics, these were all these were all dynamics that <clears throat> that I could relate to, that I think haven't been talked about in this fashion. Where, um, as I said before, there's no shame, and we we dig right in, and uh, you know you take you take those issues, then you you know you set them up against a backdrop of a football, high school football at that, with all the high high school high school angst, and it's 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 good TV, I think. Yeah. yeah. It's great TV, and you play Coach Billy Baker. Yes. And I gotta say, you you really carry yourself like a coach. There's like <laughs> this so. look you have, and you're standing I on the side, so. and I was like, yeah. okay. I mean, I bit a lot off of Friday Night Lights. I gotta tell you, because I love that show. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Kyle Chandler is, is the man. But uh, you know, this is one of those situations where I got to be that dude that that I always looked up to. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I was in dance class at a young age, and you know, drama club and theater, so. Uh, I really was uh, was looking forward to to being, you know, a little stereotypical in, in you know, in the idea of being manly. Do you know what I mean? And uh, and I get to, to on the surface show that side, but then once you you know go underneath, 
you know, some some really good stuff is is there. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your character too. Um, I don't want to give anything away. Don't but give anything I'm away. I'm not gonna give anything away. Okay. I told you I really okay. want to though, but um, he's got layers. He's got there's a lot happening mm-hmm. with him. Mm-hmm. So how would you describe him to viewers? Well, uh, you know, a lot of times you play characters that you kind of look up to, and you know, and every acting teacher will tell you not to judge the characters you play because it affects how you play them. And this is one of those characters where sometimes, you know, uh, he's very true to life in that there's no black and white. He lives in a very gray area. You know, he's a, he's a father of two. He's in an interracial relationship. And, uh, you know, there are some really great dynamics at the, you know, on, on, on the converse side. You know, he can be kind of selfish, self-centered. You know, uh, one of the main reasons he seeks after... Uh, 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 Spencer is is because he wants to keep his job, you know, uh, uh, being the coach at this uh, at this reputable high school. Having having fallen from from the NFL, he's still looking for that shine, and he thinks he can get a little bit of that back if he can uh, be the number one coach. So he sees that in Spencer, and then through the relationship, realizes realizes it's more than that. So you know, he kind of uh, makes up for it. But all throughout the series, you see him kind of. Uh, ping pong back and forth between, you know, his ego and and what he thinks is is right. I think that is very quickly what pulled me in is that I knew that he was on a journey and I was excited to see where he was going to go. Because, you know, emotionally, he's going to evolve throughout the first season. He almost has to. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. 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 Hope he does. Yeah. Yeah. And he does. But at the same time, you know, there's still a little bit of that. Oh, I thought he would have learned. You know what I mean? So and that makes it really. uh that makes it much more interesting to play just as an actor. We got to talk about the actor who plays Spencer, uh, Daniel Ezra. Yes. He is phenomenal. He's, um, he's British. That he was has, surprising. It's, uh, he, it still trips me out. I mean, it sounds ignorant, but I'm still tripped out. At like, why do you, how come you talk like that? Why do you talk like that? But he, uh, he flips into that, you know, that, uh, that accent, um, and he stays in it. You know, he stays in character until... Uh, until uh, I've never, yeah, I've only heard him speak with his British accent a few times, but uh, it's very impressive. Yeah, he's he's quite he's quite an actor. Yeah, I hadn't seen him in anything before this. Yeah, sort of he, he comes perfect. from across the pond. He's he's really big in in, in Britain. You know, uh, he's done all you know a lot of really great theater over there, a couple of TV shows, but uh, we feel proud to kind of um, uh, you know introduce him to uh, to America. <laughs> and what I didn't realize is that this is actually kind of loosely based off of a real person. Yes, Spencer yes. Pacinger, is that his name? Yes, Pacinger, exactly. Yeah. Spencer Pacing. Yeah, he had a, a great career in the NFL. And uh, uh, a lot of this is, is, as you said, based loosely on his story coming from uh, coming from the hood, mm-hmm. going to a, a different type of high school, and then taking that to the NFL. So, uh, so it's great. He's been on set <clears throat> often, so whenever we have questions... Uh, inquiries or just want to chat about the game he's been there so it's it's been uh it's been we've been I, I consider ourselves really lucky yeah how much does that help to have a resource like that 100 yeah. percent right there as opposed to someone having to make a call and then we're shooting the scene we either have to stop the scene and wait or just you know make an assumption and keep moving he's right there and uh and he's he's cool in that it's his piece but he's not in any way overbearing. He's not one of those people that's so tied to it that he's like, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said it like that. Do you know what I mean? He's, uh, he's got the sophistication that it takes to, uh, to be on the set and let the actors do what they want, let the director do what they want, and, uh, and see, uh, you know, let, let the vision kind of take its course. He's such an interesting story and obviously his perspective too as a black man that is kind of thrust into this Beverly Hills community mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and in the show it does this is what I was speaking to earlier they do such a great job mm-hmm. of calling attention to some of the things that happen every day even coded language like using the word thug or boy it's stuff and like that it's his reaction to it which really I feel like people into. wouldn't understand but yes. I'm watching it and I'm like I'm happy that they're calling that out yes. and people will be more maybe aware of yes I'm Those very code proud, words. Very proud of the CW because they are, they're digging in to to, to issues that that you know don't normally get get talked about in this manner. You know what I mean? I have a I, I have a son on the show, who's mixed race, and uh, and once I let this cat in the house, he sees the bond that we have, and at one point he comes to me and says, "I I want to know if you think I'm black enough." And I was like, you know, back in the day, we'd be like, don't, don't say that in front of white people. Like, we don't want them to know we have these issues. 
but uh but you know it's it's something that that we deal with that I've dealt with just that I still deal with and uh you know I'm very uh, excited to to bring all to bring all of this to the forefront was there any hesitation in the writers room given just like the climate with the NFL and race right now and Kaepernick and everything or is that something that they sort of embraced and would deal with 100% yeah i mean i'm i think i feel like the writers room is looking at where we are today and they're like okay that's that's five seasons worth of stuff <laughs> and we're good so uh i'm excited to to see uh and they're excited and and i can tell they're just chomping chomping at the bit just to uh to allow the climate that we're in now to to uh to overflow into into our writing so it's it's a it's a good time for us <laughs> So what was the learning curve for you? Like, you know, you said that you kind of grew up in the more artistic realm, but you got, there's a lot of coaching football. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've always been athletic, but now this gives me an excuse to just really, yes. Yeah. And not feel guilty because, uh, you know, it's research. So, uh, (laughs) um, it's just, it's great. It's, it's the, it's the locker room vibe that I always wanted as a kid, but never got to, uh, to, to experience, uh, you know, the extras, we got coaches, we've got, you know, ex-NFL players. Everybody's just right there. So there's always a ball being tossed around, and there's always locker room talk. So it's uh, it's cool. It's really cool. I get to live vicariously. In addition to Coach Taylor, mm-hmm. were there any other uh, football coaches of media? You Denzel know, Washington in uh, – rem- yeah, that was awesome. Remember the Titans? Um, what else? There's um, – uh, uh, f- 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 uh, but well, yeah. Well, I keep, I, lo- I love that. I love that. The, the I love watching Denzel because he's got he's got the attitude. He's got the swagger, and he's Denzel. And he's yeah. Denzel. He's Denzel. Yeah, you can't really go wrong. Right. So you you've got this show coming out, and that's keeping you busy. But you also just released a new book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so this cute. This is my third in a series. Uh, I love you more is, than uh, dot dot dot. Chocolate me. Second one mixed me, and this one is uh, is titled I love you more than it's a. Uh, it's a love letter to to all the people that we wish we could spend more time with. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is inspired by my son, because uh, I share custody with with his mother, and uh, and I'm very proud of it. The illustrator's here. Shane, are you out here? Yeah. Where is I was just talking up? to him in the back. Yeah. Shane, raise your hand real quick. That's Shane Evans right there. Hi, Shane. You did a great yeah, job. There we go. Thank you. Yes. Shane Evans. We were just having a conversation actually in the back, and I was With telling Shane. him, "Yeah, and don't I don't talk to my friends." Well, you know, you weren't talking to me, he's my so friend. I had to talk to him. <laughs> uh, no, but I was just saying I could tell that he's passionate about what he does because oh, the, the art in it's, the book is so great. It's his fault. I, I do that. Like, I wrote, I wrote a poem in college, and then he put it away, and then like ten years later, he, he ripped it back out and said, "I think this this poem would make a good children's book," and then. You know, he, he he drew some pictures to it, and then we took it to a publisher, and we had a book. And next thing you know, you know, we're we're writing books. <laughs> I was reading this in the back, and I was I got kind of like a little emotional. Made me want to call my mom. Oh, okay. and I didn't expect that reaction, but because of the subject matter, I grew up with a working mom, and yeah. I I immediately yeah. put myself in her shoes. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, oh, you yeah. Know, this is maybe how you feel when you have a kid. Yeah. So yeah, you'll feel that way. Do you want to have kids? Yeah. Tonight? Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. Nobody arrest My me. My phone number I'm just is. Just joking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like this, uh, having a kid really, um, obviously, it 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 sets a tone for for writing children's book, children's books. But it also, you know, I treat my mother a lot differently now, just because I I can only imagine how she feels. You know what I mean? What is it about children's book that bo- books that are so interesting to you? Because as you mentioned, this is your third. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's not going to be your last. No, no. Well, uh, well, my son, number one, um, I was read to uh, as a child, and I know the importance of it. Um, and that really, you know, having been exposed to other children that weren't getting read to, that really changed the game for me. So that was an influence. So I, I would, I, I wanted to be a part of that, and then just having my own child and. And I'm sure there's a little bit of ego in it, but there's nothing like reading a book I wrote to my kid. You know what I mean? That's that's cool. So that that uh, that's going to keep me going as well. And one that reflects the diversity we see every day. Yes. You know, growing up, I didn't have then a lot of pictures. That. Yes. You know that. One hundred percent. And all three of your books address that in a different yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very inclusive yeah. experience. Yeah. So that's uh, that's it's cool to be a part of that. Yeah. To be a part of that thrust. 
So uh, just in general, what else are you working? I, I mean, you do so much from theater to movies to film. Yeah. Anything else cool? I'm that trying excited to. About? You know, I'm just trying to create as much as much as I can. You know, we got a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, in in uh, 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 unscripted TV, scripted TV. I'm directing a play. Uh, I'm going to be workshopping something at a New York Theater Workshop coming up soon. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to uh, to do as much as I can while I can. So. Um, yeah, I'm really proud of this. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I get, what is today? Tuesday? I think so. Yeah. Today's Wednesday. No, it's Tuesday. You guys, what's today? It's Tuesday. This oh, okay. premieres tomorrow. Okay, so tomorrow, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see what happens tomorrow <laughs> night. <laughs> well, as a fan of yours, uh, I'm always just really excited to see whatever you do. And like I said, I got to see the first few episodes of this, and it did not disappoint. All so right. I think the fans are going to be really pumped hope to so. check you out. From your lips to God's ears. Now's a good time to go to the audience. All right. Some questions. Let's go, audience. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to ask you, sir. Um, what was it like working with Angela Bassett in the past? And she's a nice person. She no, she's a bitch. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Angela Bassett. She's uh, you know what? Oh, you'll get a kick out of this. Um, the director of How Stella got her is directing me right now on this show. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So uh, so we're just kicking it, and we were just talking about. Um, she got me that role. Like it, she she handpicked me. Um, I, I, uh, sure she did. She, <laughs> it's funny. I was doing Rent at the time, and she went and she saw the show with the director, and uh, and she was like, this guy seems interesting, and then they brought me in for a screen test, and I remember being so nervous um, that my hands were shaking, and she took my hand in the scene and just held it, and that calmed me, and, and uh, yeah, that's something I just remembered. So it was great. She, she was great. I owe a lot to her, and... Uh, uh, it's too bad her career didn't really do well after that, and she looks awful. But you know, Black Panther was a flop. Can get some help with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but she she's I think I don't know if she's a witch or she looks almost better than she did back then. So uh, yeah, so fuck her. <laughs> Just well, kidding. Black don't crack. Just Next kidding. question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. hey um, so I was watching on song. You watched it to what? Unsung, and I saw the documentary. Oh, doc right. Yeah, the, I just watched it Sunday. Best Man? Yeah. Wait, yeah, okay, okay. I just okay. watched it Sunday. Okay. So, anyway, my name is Monica Simone. Good to How see you, Monica. How do you relate Harper to the character you played in Brown Sugar? Mm -hmm. And how is it to work with Sanaa? That's my girl crush. How oh, I crush? get it. I get it. I understand that. She's my, I call her my work wife, because we've been in three or four movies together. Um... No one knows me better than her on and off the set. Um, the, first, the first answer would be both those characters um, kind of grow up in the, in the course of the film, um, and that's always fun to do, um, which is different from this cat. This, guy, this cat's a man, you know what I mean? Um, and, uh, yeah, as I said before, um, I'm looking for something else to work with Sana on because uh, it's been a minute, and she's... Uh, we. We just know each other's vibes um, so well that uh, we, it's not work, you know what I mean? And, uh, and that's chemistry that's already there. And in this day and age, it's difficult to find true chemistry with people. Um, and and it's, it's, all, it's always there with her, so I'm very grateful. She's great. She's great. And fans love seeing you guys together. You think? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All absolutely. right. Well, good. So make that happen. I'll try. I'll ask. She's uh, what is she doing? Napoli ever? Napoli ever yeah. After. She, she was just here. Actually, I got to oh, talk word? to her. Yeah, she was fantastic. That movie is beyond. See, amazing. she's beyond. yeah. She's got good taste. She's got really good taste. And one last question before we go. Hi, Kevin Hill. This is Raheem from Queens, New York. All right. Good to see you, man. Well, I love you. All the show is going private practice and Kevin Hill. Thank. You. Oh, Kevin Hill. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I want to know, do you prefer doing drama or comedy or action movies? Comedy. Okay. I would do comedies for the rest of my life because I'm a fool. <laughs> and I just like being silly. Um, uh, the comedies that I've done, I've laughed all day, and I've not regretted it. I just love, uh, I love humor. I, I love being silly. Um, the other stuff is fun. But given my druthers, I'd uh, I'd laugh all day if I, if I had the chance had the, ch the chance and choice. Hi, right. have a good work again, sir. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. All right, go New York. Yes, sir.
Yes, sir. Your character in Set It Up was really funny. That one that looked like it was, was fun <laughs> to play because he was just so over the top. Yeah, that one, that it messed me up because I was like, I just want to do this. Like, I, yeah, it had been a minute since I had done a romantic comedy like that. So, so I'm, uh, I'm talking to Netflix now, and I'm like, let's let's get it going. I want to do some more, yeah. Make it happen. In the meantime, people have a lot of other ways that they can enjoy you. First, this book, I Love You More Than, is available yes. now, wherever books are sold. And All American premieres Wednesday, October 10th, ooh, ooh. 9, 8 Central on The CW. Yes, ma'am. Give it up for Tay Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you.